Cybersecurity has been tipped to be one of the hottest professions of 2025. If you followed this channel long enough, you know I make a lot of videos in the security space, specifically network security. But in this video, what I'll do is I'll speak a little more about the broader domains of cybersecurity from a perspective of getting into the domain in 2025. The list of different professions that you have within cybersecurity that you can aim to get into. I'll mainly be speaking about the most popular ones and the trendy ones for the coming year. I'm also going to be sneaking network security in it as a personal bias. But if you want to know all about these things, do stick around. If not, and you want to know about the individual professions, then check the timestamps and you can just click on it and go to that relevant section. But my recommendation would be to just hang around and watch the whole video to get a full bigger picture understanding of cybersecurity in 2025. Most of you may know, and for those who don't know, Cybersecurity is a huge domain. You can think of it as an umbrella with a lot of individual domains that sit under it. Examples of these domains would be user security, application security, system security, network security, etc. Now, with so many domains, it's very difficult to major into all of these. I mean, most people, what they do is uh, they choose one domain and try to narrow or master within that domain. And that is what I also stand by. I'm completely against this ideology that you need to know every domain within cybersecurity. I mean, that's what most of uh, the younger people do that are getting into the domain is they think that they've got to know everything within cybersecurity and stop. That is not how you approach this. Uh, master one domain, pick one domain and try to go further within that domain. And then what you can do is you can then try to get into, let's say, another side domain because there is quite a lot of overlap between these different domains within cybersecurity. The job roles that I'm going to be speaking about are a penetration tester, which will include both red teaming and blue teaming, um, a SOC analyst, cybersecurity analyst, and a network security engineer. Let's address one of those shiny aspects of cybersecurity before we look at what these professions are, and that is the remuneration or salaries associated with professions within the cybersecurity domain. And all of these that I listed, penetration testing, SOC analyst, network security, etc. All of these domains, if you're, let's say, starting out, you can easily expect a minimum salary of anywhere upwards of 90 to 100,000 US dollars. This is as a complete junior, as a complete fresher I'm talking about. And let's say if you've got decent two to three years of experience, then you can easily be looking at somewhere around 120 plus thousand uh, US dollars. And this is one of the main drivers behind why cybersecurity is very popular because it's a booming domain. It is always in the talk with a lot of security breaches and attacks that take place. And digital defense is so important in today's day and age. Hence, cybersecurity is absolutely essential. Therefore, the salaries associated with these have also skyrocketed. And it takes roughly about a year to understand the basics of cybersecurity and get an entry level position. So it's a pretty good time to invest in yourself to get a really good salary as a junior employee. Let's speak about the roles and responsibilities of the individual domains. I'll start off with network security because that is what I work in and I have a personal bias towards it. Network security is a specialized domain from network engineering. So if you want to get into network security, you need to know network engineering. Some of the certifications you can do to understand network engineering are the CCNA, or the CompTIA Network Plus. If you're looking to get network security, then I would recommend you definitely get a networking certification first. And the CCNA is probably your best bet. But once you do your network engineering certifications and let's say you get that networking knowledge in about how devices communicate with each other, routing, switching, wireless networking, then what you do is you start adding security aspects onto it. That would include firewalls, intrusion detection systems, intrusion prevention systems, reading of firewall logs, allowing secure traffic to you know go through these firewalls, configuring security policies, all of this cool stuff. If you want to know how to be a network security engineer, because on this channel I've made so many videos on that, I've got a separate playlist. Uh, the link is going to be in the description. Do watch it. It has about seven or eight videos which will give you a comprehensive guide on how to be a network security engineer in 2025. Now, from a firewall perspective, some of the certifications that you can do would be the PCNSA, which is a Palo Alto focused certification or some of the Fortinet based NSC certifications. If not, you can also just do the CompTIA Security Plus, which will give you a good idea about 
cyber security which includes network security as well and can help you get a entry level position even though i feel that you should get a firewall certification because that is like uh, the core concept of network security if we move away from network security the next hottest domain within cyber security is probably going to be a SOC analyst. A SOC analyst stands for Security Operations Center Analyst and the main roles and responsibilities from a tech perspective that a security analyst or a SOC analyst would have to perform would be reading of logs, analyzing of logs, incidents, alerts, seeing what alerts are genuine alerts, uh, scanning any uh, false positives, any false negatives, taking appropriate action towards any positives that are generated from these logs. As a result of this, you need to know how to work with SIEM tools. Examples could be Splunk. CrowdStrike is a very famous uh, tool that SOC analysts also work with. As a SOC analyst, you don't need to know the very foundations of network engineering like say a network security engineer would need to. Hence, I won't recommend that you know you go and do some networking based certifications. Rather, you can do the more general certifications such as uh, the CompTIA Security Plus or some people even do the CEH, the Certified Ethical Hacker. Although I feel the Certified Ethical Hacker is an overkill for a SOC analyst, but definitely you can do the CompTIA Security Plus and also try to get some hands-on experience with uh, SIEM tools. Splunk is an example. Another up-and-coming SIEM tool is Microsoft Sentinel which is a cloud-based SIEM tool. So it's all of this cool stuff that you get to work on as a SOC analyst, where your primary role is going to be reading thousands and thousands and thousands of logs and attending to any incidents that arise by reading of these logs. Now, depending on the organization, as a SOC analyst as well, there are different tiers. Like you may have a tier one SOC analyst, you may have a tier two SOC analyst, where the tier one's main roles would be sifting through hundreds and thousands of these lines of logs. The tier two would be probably the tier two or three. Sometimes they're collapsed into one. Their role would be, okay, the tier one has escalated certain points or, you know, tasks that have to be attended to based on reading of the initial logs. The tier two or tier three SOC analyst role would be to actively try and mitigate them or um, convey all of this information to the relevant uh, tech teams to put measures in place so that any of these uh, attacks, hacks, or potential breaches could be avoided. A cybersecurity analyst now is very close to a SOC analyst, wherein I think the main difference between a SOC analyst and a cybersecurity analyst would be that probably a cybersecurity analyst may not need to go through so many logs as a core responsibility, even though I'll state this again, depending from organization to organization, the structure, the size, there is a lot of overlap between the roles and responsibilities of different cybersecurity professions. In saying that, cybersecurity analysts and SOC analysts do have a lot of common points between them. So just like a SOC analyst, a cybersecurity analyst also needs to know threat intelligence, needs to be able to understand and read logs, see what are false positives, what are false negatives, and take the appropriate actions mitigate any incidents if there are any CVEs related to any um, IT systems or anything that's used by the organization. It is the cybersecurity analyst's role to understand what these CVEs are, see how the organization is affected and what necessary controls need to be put into place so that no breaches can ever happen. And with certifications, if you want to be a cybersecurity analyst, you'll probably again do the CompTIA Security Plus uh, again, certified ethical hacker, no, for a cybersecurity um, analyst. However, there is a CompTIA uh, cybersecurity analyst plus certification, which you can probably do if you want to be uh, a cybersecurity analyst. And finally, coming into penetration testing. Penetration testing is probably one of the more hands on cybersecurity domains, wherein, depending on what sector within penetration testing you belong to and i'll speak about the different sectors you've got to have a lot of hands-on experience practice and practical knowledge when it comes to trying to penetrate an organization's network it infrastructure systems etc now penetration testing is divided primarily into two teams where one is the red team and the other one's the blue team red team engineers their main roles will be to actively try and breach an organization or a network Whereas a blue team engineer focuses more on defending against those type of 
attacks or breaches. The term offensive security is associated with a red team engineer, whereas defensive security is associated with a blue team engineer. In saying that, both a red team and a blue team engineer need to know ethical hacking. And therefore, one of the most famous ethical hacking certification is the CEH, also stands for Certified Ethical Hacker. But other than this, again, you can have the CompTIA Security Plus as a certification, which is a foundational level cybersecurity certification for all of these domains that I've spoken about, including penetration testing. And two of the most famous penetration testing certifications would probably be the CEH or the OSCP, Offensive Security Certified Professional, uh, very famous and very in demand. And you can also do the GIAC certified penetration tester. And look, as I've spoken in this video already, there is a lot of overlap between the roles and responsibilities of these different domains. Therefore, if let's say you want to get into network security, because one of my students asked me this, is that I want to get into network security, but then the role I'm getting is of a SOC analyst. Should I take it? Should I go ahead with it? And I will strongly say yes. Cybersecurity, there's a lot of overlap. So whatever domain you get an entry into, please do take it. Work in that domain for, let's say, a year. While you're working, you can then try and explore, let's say, network security if you like that more. And then you can look to transition back into network security a bit later on with the valuable SOC experience. And similarly, you can interchange the different professions. And uh, look, at the end of the day, cybersecurity is one. Domains are different, but it all falls under the umbrella of keeping your organization or infrastructure safe. Therefore, any of these domains, any of these professions in the year 2025 is going to be huge. So if you're deciding to get into cybersecurity, great decision. If you're already working towards it, if you're all, almost there, then amazing. All the very best to you for the coming year. And if you're watching this video, let's say in the middle of 2025 as well, no issues at all. These professions, these domains, are going to stay they're going to be and they are going to be trendy and they're going to be as hot as ever so if you've liked this video do hit the like button subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next video